Hello, my peeps. <laughs> you just about got a shot up my nose as I was looking to figure out what the star thing was. It is Tracy, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. I'm in my, I don't know, I was thinking about this as I was getting ready to start. Do you call it a kitchen table or dining room table? Because with an open floor plan, do you really have a dining room anymore? I don't, growing up, it's always been the kitchen table. So there it is, kitchen table. And why am I at the kitchen table, you ask? Because I'm going to tell you why I love kids. Here's what I've got with me. My scissors. Oops, sorry. I just realized how out of screen I was. So this is what I have. My scissors. My two kit boxes. Cup of tea, because it's me. And my table. Now, close your eyes <laughs> if you are not, or if you are easily made motion sick. I'm going to try to do this the easy way. Look, it's the wall in my... I don't know, dining room open floor space. So here's one of the reasons that I decided to do it at my dining room table. <clears throat> Cause kits are awesome. Kits are awesome. The simplicity of kits, it's awesome. But when, when I make kits, I make them at my desk and I know I do it. I know I say, it comes with an ink spot, but I'm just gonna use my ink pad. It comes with this, but I'm just gonna use this. Ooh, I have one of these, I'm just gonna, and it kind of defeats the purpose of one of the main things about kits. So one of the main things about kits that is awesome is that everything you need is in the box. Oh, sorry. Mm, I apologize again. One more last time. I'm going to put my hand in front of the thing this time, maybe. And I'm going to see if I can do this slow enough as, so as not to make anybody sick. Okay, so why when I did this earlier, did it turn enough to go to my table and now it doesn't? Oh, you guys, just a minute. <laughs> Did I forewarn you? Maybe big gravel. That's what I should say. There we go. Next time I'm doing a kit, I'm going to say, forewarning, bring gravel. Okay. Oh, look at me go. So, I don't know if you guys, if you're aware, something glitched on the Facebook app that made... It said I can't turn my phone while live. I didn't turn my phone while live. Oh, hello, Nikki. I can see comments. I love my wallpaper. I would like to take credit for the wallpaper, but, where's where it comes? oh yeah, um, but it was in the house when I bought it. <laughs> so I have no, no say in that. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, there we go. I'm trying to get my iPad going at the same time so I can see comments. Hello, Nikki. Okay. I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> As I got all distracted by the, oh, I should show you this. Anyways, one of the beauties of kits, yes, is that everything's in the box. All you need is a pair of scissors. And sometimes with a kit, you don't even need a pair of scissors. <laughs> it, it generally is, I think it's really just ribbon or twine. If there's ribbon or twine in there, most of the time you don't need them. I like them because you know me, I like to like clean up my little, the little nibs that are on the sides of die cut sometimes. Um, Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pause from regularly scheduled pro programming for a minute. I gave my son, my teenage son, teenage might be the important word here, an hour and a half warning that I was gonna do this live. That's why I picked one o'clock, because so I had to give him a time and tell him to get ready. And I told him, I need you and the dog to be gone. Half hour, 45 minutes, I was, I was gonna try to keep it. I know it's the middle of a Saturday. I was gonna try to keep it short. I don't generally do short, I tend to ramble, but, um, so I wanted to give him lots of time. You guys just have to be somewhere, go for a walk, go in the yard, do something. So of course he comes up at five to one. Where's my shoes? Where's my gloves? Where's my... And so he has got the dog in the backyard, but the dog can tell, see, even dogs prefer stamping. So instead of playing in the backyard where my son is currently weeding, um, he actually enjoys it. Thank God for that, because I hate it. Um... But the dog won't stop jumping on the patio door, which is just to my left. Um, because he can tell something's happening in here. So, anyways, I digress. Um, <clears throat> here's the other thing I will tell you. Thank you guys all very much. I got lots of well wishes and stuff. Um, I was feeling fine at the beginning of the week. And I woke up Wednesday and thought, oh my god. Like, I couldn't have got sick this fast. I was around a group of people on Tuesday night. But I'm like, I couldn't have got sick this fast. What the heck is going on? But chronic sinus issues, I've had them my whole life, and something irritated them, and so for two days, oh, good Lord, I feel like your head's gonna pop off the off your neck. Like it's pressure in your ears, and sinuses, your head. Light hurt my eyes, it was horrible. 
Yesterday I started to feel better. Started to do a couple things. Totally exhausted because I did a couple things. Like it just, it just like drains you. So I'm feeling better today, but I'm not feeling super perky. Do I want to go create something? I, part of me does, but the tired part of me goes, nah. So here's like beauty number two of the kit. I can craft and do something fun and creative, but somebody else has done all of the work for me. Plus I get to play with new things because look what I got today. I have um, the September Paper Pumpkin Kit and the new Christmas Everywhere from the kit collection. Now, I have not seen either one of these because I like to live on the edge and just open things live and see what happens. I mean, it's stamping up. You know it's going to be awesome. Um, so I, I thought, well, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to play with these things and just, here we go. So, oh, let me see, which one should I do first? Which one should I do first? <laughs> I'm going to wait for just one second because I realize that in my wisdom, okay, speaking of wisdom, again, squirrel, I got, I got a whole head of squirrels going there, so <laughs> enjoy the ride. Um, I was just about to hit the live button, so after I got dog and child settled and away, just about to hit the live button and I thought, I hope nobody phones while I'm doing this because I'm, I know what I was saying before, see, it just came back to me. Um, because I'm using my phone to do this. Because my other cameras are all hooked up and set up and like permanently in my desk. Well, probably not permanently, but I don't want to have to set them up again. Um, and so, just as I'm about to hit live, I have that thought, which makes me go, whoa, back out of Facebook, back in, do not disturb. I put a do not disturb on my phone. So, I, I consider myself a technical wizard now because I thought to do that. Um, Oh yes, there's there's no there's no wrong with these kits. I agree with you, Nikki. Um, so I'm thinking I got this all figured out. I'll, I'll do this. I can because I did test. I, I actually words I thought I would never say. Bought a selfie stick because um, I know if I try to use my phone to take a selfie, I inevitably hit the power button and then like turn it off or hit the screen or something. I can't seem to just hold it without hitting something. So I thought, well, if I put it on a stick, at least even if I'm just holding it like in my hand, like it's a phone, just about I'll get less likely to hit the buttons. But this one is like has a tripod, it has a remote. I have yet to figure out how to do, how to use the remote to like take pictures, but I'm sure there's a way. I'll get my IT department on it. So yeah, I got everything set up. Now here's the problem: I can't really see the screen of my phone very well unless I kind of like duck down and scrunch. So I'm watching on my iPad, but my iPad is not the same time. So this should be fun. Here's what I remembered that I started to say and I got distracted by the dog. Facebook's got something going with live and so you'll notice the last few days people haven't been able to do their regular lives. Um, I'm going to start with this one because I need to do something as I go. Um, people haven't been able to do their, their regular lives that they would do, like their regular camera setup and everything like that. So I just thought I probably could make mine work. But do I really have the brain power for it today? No. So I'm quite happy that... <laughs> Knock on wood. So far, so good on on the winging it with the cap with the, the phone. Okay, so Christmas everywhere. This kit just came out. So the new Christmas kits this year, we had the tags, which I've already done, and I I made all the tags, which are awesome, and then I made cards out of the tags because that was fun to try, and then I made alternates out of the tags, and I mostly used what was it was in the kit. I just added some card bases to it. Um, so. This is the problem. If I'm in a room full of craft stuff, I'm just gonna like start going rogue and do my own thing. So I thought I better not. Now, you know me, I love trees. I don't know how much, how many trees you would have seen when I did this, but sitting where I'm sitting right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I can see eight trees just from where I'm sitting. So I have a thing for trees. So you know I love this set. So this is Christmas Everywhere, and if I'm not mistaken, it is three each of three. Let me show you that again. Three each of three as I go. Um, okay. Just a minute. So here's another thing. Sorry, I'm off. I'm off screen again because I was trying to see what I was doing, so I didn't cut anything. I would normally open my kits with my scissors that are speci specially designated for packing, so I don't use my good scissors on the packaging. But I'm going with one tool. So I won't drag all that other stuff in. I don't, by the way, just in case you're thinking, oh my goodness, what have I signed myself up for? My plan is not, I have to move some of this stuff. I have a very tiny workspace right now. <laughs> it's just not working. Uh, my plan is not to make this entire kit for both of these kits <laughs> because that would take way too long. 
but well, it wouldn't take way too long. It'd probably take hour, hour and a half. Um, but that's probably way too long for a live. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I'm not going to put you through that. So yeah, this is, um, this is going to be a fun kit. So one of the other things I like about kits and why looking at this picture did it make me think of that? I don't know. Cause what's in the other kit is actually more likely to trigger my mind to gifting. But, um, I know so many people who would like this kit. I guess that's what made me think of it. That these kits are great as gifts because again, you don't need any supplies. Every, nobody, maybe they don't all have fancy stamp and up oh, snips, which are totally worth it to have. Um, they might just have regular old scissors, but uh, that's all you need. Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't actually see any twine on here, so I'm not even sure I'm going to need my scissors. Uh, these kit collection kits come with the block, so the block I need for the stamp set is there. They come with their own ink pad, which I'm going to prep and open because my thought was I would make one of each card. I am like total, total squirrel this morning. Like I said, it's so nice. I didn't for a couple. I'm so far behind in everything now because for a couple of days I couldn't, like I could barely move. And now I just have so much to catch up on, but I'm also too tired really to catch up on it. <laughs> and so I really just want to play. So, but I'm going to do a bit. I'm so, so I'm like technically working, I guess, and getting some stuff done. So after usual, I'm just going to set those off to the side and possibly look at them. Possibly not because I just do whatever. So here's the thing. Um, as soon as I sat down, I thought I should have at least brought a piece of paper. Nope. Turns out I don't even need to do that because look at this. This is the little uh, cardboard backing that comes in there. And that's going to make the perfect place map for my kids. Ooh, look at me flipping those over without knocking them all on the floor. Okay, so, oh, pretty insides. Okay, so this comes with all of the envelopes. Look at that. Oh, I love the little, I like it when you look at this, and I'm going to stamp little trees on the front of my envelopes, because you know I am. But then when you open it, and whoop, pop a color. That's fun. So we have, this is how I like to do my kits. We have all the card bases. Awesome. We have the dog and the sun coming in the door. And, uh, Rascal's still in a cone. He's in a very large cone. So, of course, he uh, jumps up and knocks everything with his big cone head. Okay, who's from the 80s and can still remember cone heads on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> yep, that's me. Um, okay, there we go. Look at these three card bases. Oh, my goodness. I, so, okay, I love this kid already, and all I've done is look at the colors of the cards. I haven't even looked at anything else. How fantastic is that? Okay, we have the adhesives we need. There's the dimensionals. Now these appear to all be the same. We have so there's got to be oh wait just a minute. Nope, oh, they're all the same. It was what you remember when you were a kid. Oh, seriously, squirrel, and you used to draw those pictures and they go whoa. So this is you walking through the forest. Whoa. Okay. Um, so those are our bases that are going to go on each. Okay, I'm going to take. I'm going to take one of each base and I'm going to put the rest of them back in the box. Sorry. I eventually have somewhere to work. Uh, now, I've told you before, I, I do have a bone folder on my desk, and I do swear by it because um, if your hands are at all dirty or greasy or whatever, you don't want that stuff on them. But I will tell you what else works. Uh, anything not your finger. <laughs> so this works. Um, you just have to be careful because these, these blocks are a little bit, like the cardstock, can, it can stand up to it, but the, the, they're not sharp but they definitely have a square edge. So just don't angle too much because you don't want to scratch the, um, the finish off your card, right? You know what else would work for this? Not that I've ever tried it, but I'm gonna speculate and I'm gonna do it live because you know if you're gonna try things, why not try them live? I'm gonna guess this ink spot. Ooh. Ooh, the ink spot is like super slippery. <laughs> oh, but see what I did? I pushed a little too hard. Can you see that? And I took some of the Lost Lagoon not that everybody would notice if you didn't really show them, but I can't see where I'm going. But eh, with any luck, you could see that I got just a bit of Lost Lagoon on the side of my card because I pushed too hard with the Lost Lagoon because I was having too much fun. Okay, but honestly, even now that I put it down and I know where it is, I can barely see it. So there we go. Three card bases. We got the envelopes. Which I'm just going to stamp one envelope because I'm probably going to do them all the same anyways. Put that there. And then I like to pop out my sentiments because I find them harder to and it's personal personal preference but I find them hard when they're in here to see now these ones are a little bit better like the issue I have is if it's all white I can't see where the edges are very clearly with my progressives um, in this case the white is clearly delineated with the green around it but I still 
I still just like to have them separate and do it that way. So in this case, I would normally take all of them out, but for the purpose of today, I'm just going to take one of each color. Um, I do like to do it though. I like to take all my pieces out and I like to pile them up and I like to say, okay, so with this card goes this one with, and I do one card. I generally, there's never any, I 100% do anything, but I generally do one of each card in the kit exactly how it's supposed to be done. And then after that, then I just do whatever I want. Now, sometimes I will, if, if you're in a hurry, because <laughs> there's the beauty, this is done fast and these kits are really designed to be done in like an hour or less. So if you were in a hurry and you actually just sat down, popped all the stuff out, made the kit the way they tell you to, yeah, you would be done quickly. Um, if you if you weren't me doing your own thing. Um, but yeah, you could do them quickly. But sometimes then afterwards, then I like to mix and match and play and see what happens. So according to the picture, we're going to put two of those guys there. So every now and again when I stop, it's because I'm trying to, I apparently can't talk and scrunch at the same time. I'm trying to scrunch down so I can see if there's any new comments. Um, I'm trying to see if, I don't know where the button is that says how many people are watching. Um, so I know we have the lovely Nikki and I don't know if anybody else is there and I don't know if there's any new comments but I'm going to do my best to keep looking. Okay, so then I'm going to put this one on this one and then I'm going to put this one on this one. And yeah, I would, like I said, normally poke the ball out. Um, <clears throat> so here's what I'm getting out of this. Because I was kind of curious, <laughs> um, it, what if people didn't want palm trees on their Christmas cards? So from the looks of it, if you look at just the sample, like just the instruction thing here, they're all made with evergreen trees. And I forgot to put this one up. And there appears to be, because we got three of each, so there, there's three sheets of each one of these cards. So it, this is what I'm getting. And this is Go Stampin' Up Go. They are awesome. They do like to think of crafters as give them what they need. So that the, the crafter who wants to just sit down and make a kit, you can. The crafter who wants to play a little and mix things up, you can. The person who wants to take a little bit of extra cardstock out of their stash and make three times what the kit <laughs> intended, you can. So all of these cards, so that's the trees that go on all of these cards. And there is three of each of them. So you can make all nine cards exactly like the pictures. Sorry, I did decide to pop all these things out because some things are just fun and I just can't stop myself. Um, so I popped all my trees out. So I have more than enough trees to do that. But I also have a full sheet, which has one, two, three, four, five of each of the, I was gonna say pineapples, that's not there. Cactuses, cactuses and palm trees. So this is awesome because there is evergreens kind of in the background, but I think for one of these cards, at least one of these cards, um, I'm going to pop it out and I'm going to put cactuses on it for my mom and her friend who is in, who they met in Arizona, might have cactuses on her Christmas card and actually a palm tree. And then my brother and his, the wife live in Florida, so palm trees. So, I mean, I can personalize a couple of my Southern cards that are going out by adding these and these are just extras and if not look what I have for extra cards so that's awesome so yeah extra pieces and the fact that you can do your own thing love it okay so like I said everything you need is in here which is just genius so I'm gonna put this card here which card am I on I'm on the red one now from the looks of it I can set these up the way I want you guys know me and I love dimensionals uh, okay here's the reason you need scissors because, and this is what I do, seriously, every time. I haven't even taken a single dimensional off this off this sheet. But I take my scissors, and normally I would take my other scissors, my adhesive scissors, because, yep, i got a pair of those too, but I'm determined to do this. I'm sure one time will not be the end of it. And I go around, and I cut all the end pieces. Um, I, you know, yeah, everybody has different tips and stuff. This should be one of my Scottish tips. My mom always says it's my dad's Scottish blood running through me that... Uh, Makes me frugal, but waste not, want not. And some, sometimes these little edge pieces are the perfect size because you get like little half dimensionals and then on either end you get like little L's. So when you're putting, here, let's do this so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, when you're putting, um, I'm not gonna do the whole sheet because like I said, do you want to sit there for five minutes and watch me? No. Uh, but when you're putting something like this on a point of some kind, these little end pieces, are perfect because they make little L's and they're pointed. 
So not only are you not wasting it, but I think that's in screen. Um, you know, it's funny when I do this again, squirrel, when I do this on my computer, the lag time between like what I'm watching as, so I know what I'm doing and what is showing up live is like way longer. This one is actually fairly quick now that I pay more attention. Okay. So this is good because yeah, these end pieces work perfectly there. So with all things, don't just stick one dimensional in the middle because then your thing will, you know, move a little, twist a little. If you put at least two dimensionals on, it's going to stay nice and secure and where you want it to go. Okay, so I'm putting dimensionals. Uh, and the other reason I, I probably would always have scissors is every now and again you get these little nibs that come from the little die cutting, the things that hold them on. And so sometimes they're prominent and sometimes you need to shave the little nibs off the side. Do these ones are actually are not too bad and that you know what nobody would think anything of it if you didn't I am just that kind of picky okay so there's those I'm also gonna put dimensionals on there and I was just about to but maybe I should stamp it first because that'd be a good idea okay so I'm gonna stamp the sentiment and according to this plan which I have not even opened the instructions but according to this plan I'm gonna stamp some trees so here's something you can do <clears throat> I have I don't know 30 minimum 30 of these clear blocks not exactly this one various shapes and different ones some left over from kits which i just keep and throw in so this is a d block and i have probably 15 of this size but i have like all sorts of shapes and sizes and yes i like having a bunch of different ones but uh, when you don't that doesn't mean you have to constantly because you know what i realize as i sit down it would have been a good idea to bring like a piece of paper towel <laughs> or a baby wipe or a stamp and scrub or a stamp and chamois whatever you happen to have um, it would have been a good idea to bring one of those with me but I did not so here's the thing if you are careful um, you can put multiple stamps on one so because by the time I'm done I'm gonna have ended up stamping all three of these I put them all on so <clears throat> another tip for you <clears throat> Another tip is have tea nearby so that when your voice goes, you have something to drink. You ever notice that on an average day, you would never think, wow, do I swallow loudly? <laughs> Until you're all of a sudden super quiet and you think, wow, do I swallow loudly? Okay, so <clears throat> I've put all three trees on one block. Now I put the biggest tree in the middle of this block. Um, I like to have my blocks like closer to the size because you're less likely to rock them. The, the reason this biggest tree isn't a single in the middle is because it is less likely to rock. It's the biggest stamp. These ones are both a little bit narrower, so they have a more, more likely that they will rock. I have one on either end because I'm pretty sure that however I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna ink up just one at a time and be able to stamp like one and one. But if not, they're far enough apart that all I've gotta do is put a little piece of scratch paper between them um, and I won't get this ink on the other tree. So, but I, you could just do one at a time. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> um, I like to have them all ready at once so that I can just go doop, doop, doop. Um, and because I forgot to bring something to wipe stuff with. Uh, <laughs> and this is, well, this is my scrap paper. Let's see how far it goes. Um, <clears throat> then uh, I'm going to make this work so I don't have to be touching them with ink on my fingers. Oh, uh, what am I doing? I'm working on a red card. You know what? It, it show, I'm looking at what they say to do and... And already I'm just like, does it matter? But you know what? I'm, I'm, I said I'm going to do one the way they said, so I'm going to do one the way they said. Okay, so little ink spots, you can do one of two ways. You can hold your stamp and pop your ink pad, or you can put your ink pad down and just kind of pop your stamp on it. Now, because this has never been used before, I'm just going to use my little scratch cardboard, <laughs> as we're now going to call it. Oh, look at that. It stamped really well. Things are not 100% on cardboard, but I can tell right there that I got a really good coverage first try, so that's good. Okay, so this one looks like I'm going to layer some trees. And so what I'm basically doing is stamping like a tree on either side. This one's going to go in the middle to make my forest. So I'm going to put one over here. And it, I don't know if it's meant to be. It kind of looks like it is, but um, it could also be this ink pad. But I kind of like the effect I'm getting. I'm getting a bit of a like a linen effect on my stamp. And I didn't get it on the cardboard, but the cardboard's way more porous, so who knows? I don't know if there's a rhyme or a reason to how I would do that, but 
Hope that one got a little darker, but that's okay. Trees are all different. Same advice I would give you all the time. Before you stick something in the middle of that, put something on it. Um, what do these all say? These all say warm wishes, happy holidays. Okay, so I am going to have to take my trees off because I realize now that uh, if I want to stamp a sentiment on this, it's not going to work because I've used both sides. Okay, so I'm going to take my trees back off. See, this is what happens. I don't read instructions. I don't pay attention. I just, I just start going. Um, and here's the thing. In fairness to Stampin' Up, they give you an awesome set of instructions. <laughs> like, look at this. Their color, their, whoa, they're beautiful. So, I realize how long this has taken and how much I've been rambling, but I also realize these three cards all pretty much go together the same way. So, I'm just going to move those out of the way because I'm actually only going to make one from this and then we're going to delve into the other one because um, that will save me with the thing too. And it's not that I can't. Like, everything is here. I very easily could do this. Um, but I just seriously, I don't think you want to sit here for two hours and <laughs> watch me put my stamp together. Um, you could, because I very easily could sit here for two hours and chat while I put my things together. Is anybody else crafting while you watch me? Are we crafting together? Okay. So I got dust there. So I want this to say warm wishes. Now, here's the other thing. Sorry, I'm trying to do it so I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to line my stamps up. I'm trying to make them straight. And warm is just slightly smaller than wishes. So I'm trying to center it. Now, before I put ink on it, <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that I didn't make it too wide for my thing. No, I did not. Because you, what, however you space your little things, you still got to fit in this, this little white spot, right? So I'm going to stamp this. I'm going to stamp this on my cardboard for two reasons. One, it's good to kind of condition the stamp. And if the stamp is not holding ink, like sometimes a photopolymer, they just seem like they have a little bit of film left on them from the processing. Um, you can just, just do this, like put a little bit of ink on them and wipe them on something. Um, I, I have seen demonstrators say they wipe them on their pants. They use a bit of an eraser. They put the ink, Versamark ink, um, I find that you just have to stamp it up a bit. And if it's not taking like really good ink the first time, then even, yeah, just kind of rub it on something. So rub it on your scratch paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it a second time for two reasons. Okay, so one, way better ink coverage that time. But, and shockingly, I have this evenly spaced and straight first try. So um, you saw it here, folks, it can happen. It rarely does, but it can happen. Normally you would stamp it here and then adjust as you needed to, but this warm wishes, is actually just like perfect so now I can go and stamp in the middle of my scent or my <clears throat> excuse me my label okay so while I have the ink open where'd my envelope go I'm gonna take because this is a tree I put on the outside of the envelope as well and I would use like all the different ones by the time I was done on all the different cards but I'm gonna take my tree and I'm gonna stamp a little tree on the envelope and I'm gonna take my tree and sometimes just you know for kicks I like to stamp it right in the middle just make sure you don't have that underneath that will make you have a ridge in the middle of your stamp I'm gonna stamp it right in the middle of the inside on this one Ta -da! so now I can put my ink away and know that I'm kind of done with that for now let's just try to keep things clean so here's an unknown thing when you forget your uh, your wipes and you're just throwing it back in the box uh, you can put it in the I put it on but I think I'll put it in <laughs> you can just temporarily put it back in the bag that the block came in so you don't get ink everywhere. There we go. All right, so that's one. And then I need my dimensionals to go on. Oops, I got two. I got a two for to go there. <sighs> mm. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I had more cards than I mail, but... And I don't have my little, in my office I have a, <clears throat> I think I'm okay. I have a, um, like a little mail slot that I got from my lovely friend Tamara. And so you can test your envelope and put it through it to see if it'll, if it'll end up being oversized if you put it in the mail. Um, but I like dimensionals. I want to put dimensionals on this layer and I want to put dimensionals on my tree. So I'm going to, because like I said, there's a good chance I'm actually just going to hand this card to somebody. 
but I'm also pretty sure that because there's no embellishments on it, I think if I was putting big embellishments on it or something, I might run into a problem, but for this, I'm not going to. So this is offset high, so we have room for the label. And these little lines that are on the card, the little two-tone line decorations, are not straight, so don't try to line it up with that. They're meant to be wavy, which is probably a good thing because now you won't look and go, oh, look, the lines are straight and the layer's wrong. And then we're gonna put this little guy. And by total fluke, I just put these kind of in the middle. So yes, this is overlapping here, so make sure you don't put them too high or you're not gonna, you could put them like right along the bottom edge, actually, because um, this is gonna rest on here anyway. So I'm gonna put this on first before I put my trees on, just in case I don't wanna get my tree chunks close to the trees, right? So, and yes, that was dog and kid again. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna pop my little backs off. So right now I'm using the box as a garbage. All the garbage and everything's going back in the box. And I'm gonna put one tree there. Oh, good Lord, this card is cute. And it is way way simpler and way faster than I made it. If I wasn't rambling on, I probably would have been done all nine of them by now. Oh, good Lord, it's adorable. And then this guy in the middle. And yeah, I love that it has the extra pieces. So quick and easy, pop it in, give it as a gift. Look at your Christmas cards. And there's little five little trees in there. Actually, there's seven trees, but that's still good. You got a nice odd number. I got an envelope with the fancy color reveal it's awesome oh I think I have somebody else great tip I, I just saw the word great tip pop up which is awesome um, I cannot make my comments show up on my screen anymore so it's possible they've been there all along so look at this card and so you get three cards different colors slightly different trees look how adorable those are even if you're not you know a tree hugger like myself those are adorable so there you go self-contained everything you need Simple. I had so much fun making that card. <laughs> um, and when I'm done alive, I'm going to go back and finish the kit because I just want to craft and get away and not have to worry about anything. <sighs> and it's all done for me and I can make this beautiful little kit. And, and then I have cards to send out. So yeah, oh, I love kits. Okay, now for some more excitement. Paper pumpkin. I'm going to tell you something now, just, just to help you out here. Just a sec, I have to sip tea. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there we go. I was about to comment back, I think. Okay. So this was the kit collection kit, right? So on the first Tuesday of each month, Stampin' Up! releases a new kit. When they first came out, it was sort of like, here's a kit, and then all of a sudden, here's a kit. But they've sort of, within, within the first few kits, they refined that to be a more regular thing. So now it's the first Tuesday of each month. So we had tags last month. This is this month. I'm very excited next month about what appears to be an advent banner. We don't see, in, like the day before this kit releases, we will find out, hey, the, tomorrow's kit is. And I usually make a little graphic and post it so everybody can see what tomorrow's kit is. Um, actually, I think they release them on the Tuesday and you can start buying them on the Wednesday, but it's possible you could buy them on the Tuesday. I'm not 100% sure. Last time you could buy it the same day the catalog started, so I don't know. Anyway, so there's, there's lots to choose from. There's seasonal ones, there's thank you ones, there's a couple home decor ones. So with the kit collection, <clears throat> you, you see the full kit before you can buy it, which is, a, for some people, that's what they want to know. They want to know exactly what's in the kit. Uh, the kits are while they last. So if you see this kit showing up online under the kit collection, that means it's in stock. If you see it on the kit collection and underneath it says currently unavailable, that means that the the current inventory is out, but they have more coming. So it will be available again once the once the shipment comes in. If you see it there one day and the next day you go back and it's gone, it's gone. That means it is sold out and it is not coming back. So if they pull the image from the from the online kits, like the kit collection, which you can only see online, um, it means it's done. They've sold out. So we don't know ahead of time how many kits or how long or anything. So it is, but there's like kits from as far back as 2021. Um, so 21 was when they started doing it on a regular basis, all of 22 and then 23. So currently there's a couple because we had the kit sale in August. There's a couple that are out of stock that haven't come back in. Most of the kits are in stock. So there's a magnet board and a wreath that would be home decor. There's little like thank you kits. There's a couple kits that have party favors in them or like treat 
One's a box and one's like the little pillow box. Um, there's some tag kits. There's some pre previous year's Christmas stuff. Thank you. Get well. Birthday. There's some shaker cards. There's such a variety of them. You can see what they are. You can order them. Kits galore. Lots of options. They make great gifts. Paper pumpkin, for those watching. We have some new people joining me. I realize for some of you guys, you're like, yeah, we know all of this. But I've started to meet some great new people lately. Um, some local and some online. And so I feel like I, maybe I should just explain myself a little bit so people aren't going, what's the difference? So when paper pumpkin first came out, the boxes were orange all the time. And um, I think, oh, in the last year, we've had a couple of the boxes that were, have been orange, but I think now it seems like there's more kits than not that have like this fancy box. So every time the box tends to be a bit of a hint as to what the next month is gonna be. So with Paper Pumpkin, we don't know ahead of time what this kit is. Um, we know the name of it, which I've forgotten, with love and gratitude. Um, and usually as a demonstrator, we'll know, and I, tend to, I try to share that in my newsletter as soon as I find out. I knew that this was eight mini cards, at least I think it was eight, and eight treat holders of some kind. Lots of time this September kit is Halloween themed. Not everybody likes Halloween. This year it's more of a thanks, thank, thankful, you know, Thanksgiving's coming. Um, I think in the, in the spring everything is new and alive, and in the fall when you're like summer's over and things are starting to, you know, get crisp and you're heading into the winter, you're just grateful and thankful and Thanksgiving helps with that. But I think this is a perfect time, any time is a perfect time, but to tell people, you know, that you're thankful and grateful for them. So very convenient there. Uh, I am thankful for my son and my dog, regardless of how much noise they make. Um, I'm still alive. So this is the September kit. So we knew ahead of time what it was. We had an idea on some colors, I think, or I think we may have seen like the odd image of it, but we never know what's exactly in the kit. Now to me, I love that. <laughs> That's part of the fun. Nobody likes that. I love that. That's part of the fun. These ones, you, the kit collection you see ahead of time, paper pumpkin, you don't. So all I did yesterday was took the cellophane off the box so that you didn't have to see me struggle with the cellophane on the box. <laughs> but other than that, I haven't actually looked inside. So, oh, you know what's funny? Yep, <laughs> I was gonna just double checking. So both of our stamp spots happen to be Lost Lagoon. So the one in the other kit. So this is Lost Lagoon for this month's kit. Lost Lagoon is such a pretty color. Um, fun fact, in a, in a 12 month Stampin' Up year, like so from, or Paper Pumpkin year. So from January to December with the Paper Pumpkin kits, you will never get the same color twice of ink spot. And I think if, if, you, if, if there's new in colors, they try to mix those into some of the kits. These are some of the new returning colors. Um, if the, uh, I just realized something as I'm going. Um, if the, um, if they just had, occasionally there's two ink spots. If they just had like black in December, they wouldn't be black in January. So it's not like they're going to put a black ink spot like back to back months just because they're different years. They do try to vary it. So by the time a year is over, you've got 12 new ink spots. And here's a good pro tip for you. If you don't want to invest in a ton of big ink pads, you can still buy the reinkers and just re-ink these ink spots. Takes up less space living in a, in a motorhome. These kits are perfect. That, I was gonna, that's one of the things I was going to say. Because these kits are so small. I, there's so many reasons I love it. And here I just ramble about stuff. But um, they're small. Like, so if I was going away. And I, was gonna, I knew I was going to stay overnight in a hotel. And I wasn't going to go anywhere at night. Because, I don't know, for various reasons. Sometimes you don't go because there's nowhere to go. Or you've been there. It's just safer to stay in the hotel. Whatever. You're in a hotel. Stuck in a hotel. You're camping and it's a rain day. Whatever, you're going to hang with somebody and you just want to have something to do for a couple hours while you chat. These kits are perfect and they're so small and compact. So yeah, you could take all of, you'll have all your stamp sets, you'll have your block, you'll have everything. At the end of a year, you'll have quite the variety. So nice and like condensed. The one thing I will tell you, and I just grabbed it out of the other one, which is the reason why my stamps are now stuck to the plastic. Um, when, you, when you sign up, when you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, your very first kit, you will get a block. Every other kit you get, you don't get a block because you've already got the one you need because everything will fit on this block. So in this case, I'm borrowing from that other kit. But if you had actually signed up, like when I signed up for Paper Pumpkin, I got a block with my first kit. Okay, so then it comes to the stamp set. And I'd love to pretend like I have any idea what kind of flowers these are, but I don't. Pretty. 
Like this is a lovely pretty flower. I have no idea what it is. Love, love, love this sprig. And as huge as it looks, it does fit on this block. <laughs> and then we have grateful for you. Thank you for you. Thanks with love and gratitude. And then I'm pretty sure, yep, this is the center of this uh, flower is what it looks like. It almost looked kind of like a bug, but I think it's the center of that flower. Um, I love those sentiments. Those sentiments are going to be so good for so many things. The other thing, it used to always just be like this baby blue colored tissue paper. Um, but now the boxes match. Did I mention I've seen the boxes for the October and November kits, which are two Christmas kits with coordinate? Oh my God, if the cards are even half as nice as the boxes. Yeah. Um, I, I put a picture of like the, the sneak pic they give us of like some of the elements of the kit. Okay, here's another reason for your scissors. <laughs> so you can help, you can help get your, your kit out of the box. Um, oh my goodness, they're awesome. So yes, I know lots of people who use this tissue paper and do lots of fun crafting things. I generally put it in the recycle. And if I'm not fast enough to put it in like a recycle that the dog can't get to, the dog loves tissue paper. So crafting kit slash dog toy. He does not eat it, for those of you worried about him eating paper. No, he does not eat it. He just likes to shred them into a million pieces. And then he's done. Oh, I guess I gotta turn that over. Oh my goodness. Oops, that's upside down. I'm like, why are those words upside down? <gasps> oh my goodness. Yeah, seriously, anybody know what kind of flowers those are? These are pretty. Oh, look at that. I knew the kits were, or the treat bags. We didn't actually see them ahead of time, but for some reason, I thought they were like white and like something like a bag, but these are so much prettier than I pictured. And then these little cards are gorgeous. And so some of these are going to be die cuts. Um, you know what? Well, paint me Thanksgiving. I don't know. I, I couldn't, I was going to swear it. I had to come up with something else. These are pumpkins. These aren't, well, I thought they were flowers. Maybe they are flowers. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe somebody else watching me has some idea. Um, I know Nancy, I, I quite like it when it's Halloween treats because I give Halloween treats to everybody. Um, and I like it when Paper Pumpkin helps me out in that regard. Um, but the, um, and hello Nancy, by the way. Oh, and hello Heather, all of a sudden I got comments. Um, when I look at this now in here and I look at the die cuts, I see pumpkins. Trying to see what I'm doing. Sound effects help. I think, well, may, who knows, maybe they're just whatever you, that you want them to be. They're either flowers or pumpkins. I have no idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still getting over, apparently. The whole, my entire head was just, that was it. It was done for. So apparently that's still affecting my voice. I didn't have a sore throat, but my throat was sore. How about that? Um, ooh, tear and tape. Tracy's favorite adhesive. Mini dimensionals. These are... I was going to say these are three by three cards, but you know what? They look, they look a little bigger than three by three, but you know how I'm going to tell you how big they are? Because I think I forgot to mention it on the other kit, but I'll mention it on this one. Oh, look at these. These are awesome. Oh, I love when somebody does all the work for me. Okay. I, I totally see pumpkins now. I saw a flower before. I totally see pumpkins now. And this, so this is the stem of the pumpkin. This is why follow me because you never know what I might think or say. Um, and these are the pumpkin leaves, but there's little ones. So, oh, and there's like two full sheets of these things. Look at that. Okay, but look at this. They're all scored and cut and way bigger than I expected them to be. Oh, sweet. Okay, we're going to get to those. In a, oh my goodness, we have blue dots as well. It is a plethora of adhesives. Um, oh my goodness, look at all the labels, and then, oh, pretty, pretty sprigs. Oops, I got them caught. Look at these. Oh my goodness. Seriously, half, oh, good lord, I got all distracted. You guys are going to think I'm a total lunatic by the time I'm done this. Um, lots of times I decide that I should open things on my own, because then people will think I'm a nutter. But I really do get this excited every time I open a paper pumpkin kiss. <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, this is like thicker, like heavier duty than our usual stuff. Look how pretty and Stampin' Up, the geniuses at Stampin' Up who packed this kit, put layers of tissue paper between them so that these little gorgeous, gorgeous sprigs 
would not all catch on each other. Look at it. Look. Oh my goodness, that's pretty. Birdie. Okay, so I'm still trying to get to the point of here's my little mat to work on. Um, on your paper pumpkin kit, on their genius instructions that show you all this stuff, do, do, do. there is a ruler in the instructions. You see on the edge of the instructions? I'm trying to hold the thing steady so I can't. Right there. So, this envelope. Yeah, see, this envelope is almost four inches. So it's a little bigger than our, because we have the little three by three envelopes and people can make little like little mini cards. So this is a mini card, but a little bit bigger than a mini card. Oh my goodness. Oh, God, let's look at the inside of the envelope. I love these sprigs. Anything green, like greenery of any kind. I'm sold. Oh my goodness, look at that. Gorgeous. A good, gorgeous. Okay, so... This time I'm going to endeavor, given that I can see the time in the kitchen for already. Yeah, maybe line that up to show you what the finish. Yep, <laughs> that's me dropping my block on the floor. Okay, just a minute, because, oh, there we go. It went halfway, halfway across the dining room. <laughs> there we are, I'm back. So you can see what the finished product is. So here's the thing with paper pumpkin kits, again, I like kits for all sorts of reasons. I love the excitement. Um, a lot of times people don't. They want to know what is in a kit before they buy it. So with the paper pumpkin kits, sometimes you got one shot at it, <laughs> honestly. So if you're, if you're subscribed, you get every month's kit. Now, if you happen to see a kit you don't like, you can go ahead and in ahead and suspend it for a month. No worries. And then the next month, you'll automatically get the kit unless you go in and suspend that one. But sometimes you see the kits and you think, oh, I need to make more of those, like a lot more. So sometimes they will sell the refills, which is all of these like consumable pieces, just not the stamp set or the ink spot. Sometimes they will have full kits. So all of this, exactly how you see it. But it, it, it all depends. Like the Christmas kits tend to sell out. So lots of times there are no refills for those. This one, people got used to Halloween, so yes, I like Halloween too. Feel better that they're pumpkins. Yeah, yeah, the pumpkins. See, see Nancy, you're just smarter than me. I just didn't see pumpkins at first. Although, in in fairness, <laughs> that didn't look like much. But um, yeah, so the the this kit. Okay, so if it hasn't sold out by the time they shipped it, which they close the the subscriptions on the tenth, they ship on the twelfth. So the first Monday after the twenty first, or possibly after the twentieth. Um they will list if there's refills. So if there's refills, it is possible you might be able to get the kit after the fact. But with these kits, if you want one, you want to get it first because there is no guarantee that they will be there afterwards. Okay, so this each one of these little cards, again, I would normally like, take the whole thing apart, like pull all the pieces out, but in the interest of time, we're just gonna take what we need for each card. So this is one of those. Yeah, so obviously pumpkins. <laughs> now that I see the die cuts, they're so obviously pumpkins. Um, <laughs> Rascal's back to visit. This goes on, oh, what do I do with the boxes over here? This goes on the box. There we go. So we're just gonna set that off to the side. Now, yes, you probably could spread out, but quite honestly, you don't really even need that much space to do these. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep everything within reach. Because I know me, and I know how prone I am to, well, dropping things on the floor, or, oh, look what Tracy just noticed. See, if Tracy would read the instructions, she would probably notice these things faster. Um, I'm prone to dropping things and knocking things over, so I like to keep things close when I do my lives. Okay, so, and here's the thing. Open your instructions at least once, maybe, is a good idea. Or, I figured it out as soon as I looked at the sheet, but... As soon as I did this, I went to put it away and I noticed, oh, wait a minute, this one in the corner is just tiny. So, if you look in the instructions, the tiny one goes on the card, probably because it's covered by all these other things, and the big one is the one that goes on the box because it's not as covered up. <laughs> so there are actually two sizes of sprigs. So, this guy is going to go over here, and this little, little cutie patootie is going to go on the box and I did it's funny enough I did as I put this down I thought oh it's almost a shame to cover that so we're gonna put our pumpkins 
Put our gourds. I don't know, are all pumpkins gourds? Nancy, you're smarter than me. Are all pumpkins gourds? <laughs> uh, we're gonna just put that there. I'm gonna wait for Nancy's answer. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, these. Oh, Nikki, you saw that they were pumpkins too. Sorry, for whatever reason, the comments are not showing up very well on my iPad. Uh, but every now and again, I can see something flash on my camera, which I can't see very well, but I can see it flash just enough to know to look there. Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, I, I, I'm, I, I can already figure this out, and I got a tip for you. Okay, so I am going to cheat slightly, and I'm going to just take the Lost Lagoon that I already opened, um, just so I don't have to open another one, because it's faster. Okay, so again, I could look at the instructions, and it would tell you, and I will do this just because we have so many adhesives in here. So it will tell you for this, um, this card, we're using three, three dimensionals and three glue dots. And then if you were to actually look at the part, oh, there we go, where they make it, they show you, oh, look how clever they are. They show you that they're putting glue dots on the back of the banner because they're gonna obviously stick the banner flat on the, on the card front. They're putting dimensionals on the back of the pumpkins to pop them up. And the little leaves are going um, um, with glue dots. But you notice on this little one here, they show you to only put dimensionals on two sides of the pumpkin and a glue dot on the other one, because it overlaps. The instructions are so smart. Okay, so here's what I needed to know. I was trying to figure out, the tear and tape is gonna be for the boxes. Um, I was trying to figure out <clears throat> how, where, like what order they were gonna put this in, where I should layer stuff. You could do whatever you want, but following their instructions, you're going to put these flat, you're going to pop this guy up, you're going to pop this guy up, oops, oh, maybe I should spread those out a little bit more, and then you're going to put your sentiment like this. <clears throat> See, now quite honestly, I, I love you stamping up, and I would like to, I, I say I'm going to do it the way I'm supposed to the first one, but I think I'm going to spread these out just a tiny bit, and I'm going to put my sentiment like that, because that's what I want to do. <laughs> So, <clears throat> you're not the boss of me. Oops, there we go. Get that open. Okay, so in this case, I need glue dots on the back of this thing. And yes, at my desk, I have all the fun tools, which make life easier. Um, but luckily, I have to have just enough nails right now that I can pick these up. So you can put glue dots on one of two ways. You can put them on. Like just pick them up, stick them on, and then when you're ready to use them, you peel the back off. Or depending when you go to pick them up, if all you get is the back, which is what happened the last time, um, then you can just peel the backs off and pop them up that way too. Like it works either way. What I'm checking first, frugal me, is, nope, um, if I happen to luck out and put, so in this case, I'm going to try to peel just the back off on purpose. Nope, got the whole thing. Um, I was trying to see if, if my uh, glue dots in there were somehow going to tack this thing down at the same time, but they are not. So because this thing is going to be absolutely covered with stuff on the bottom, not the top, but the bottom is, I'm just going to put the one glue dot, and I'm going to put him as far up in the corner as I can, so I can see as much of his beautifulness as I can. And then I'm going to put my leaves, I'm going to make sure they're going the right direction, because I almost put them upside down when I was first doing that. Uh, that I'm going to put glue dots on after I stamp. And I'll show you my other tip I thought of. Okay, so my pumpkin, this pumpkin's going to go this way. And this pumpkin, that is the dog with his cone on my leg panting <laughs> that you can probably hear on here. Okay, so this is my, my pumpkin's going to go this way. So this is the side that is going to overlap here. So I only want um, embellishments on this side. So I always flip mine over right away. And then for something like this where I actually have to remember... I will put these on right away so I can remember which side was which. Um, I do it even on these little small packs. So these are little mini ones. I do the same thing, man. I cut the edges as I go. I'm going to flip this dude over. These ones are slightly bigger pieces because this is a slightly bigger pumpkin. And I'm going to put at least, so on a big circle like this, so on, on something small I put at least two, and on something bigger I put at least three. Uh, just because it stays in place better, I think. So I'm going to put this guy, I'm going to dry fit again just to make sure I did this right. Yes. So I know I want this guy just past there, so I'm going to pop him on. 
So yeah, there's so much variety to be had in these. Um, I don't know if I would sit down. Well, one, I don't have any of the stamp set that would make this card, but I don't know that I would sit down and necessarily make this card, but I love this card. And I also know people whose style is slightly different than mine. Like the Christmas kit, that's totally my style. Clean and bright. And, um, but I know so many people that would love this style, and I do love it. It is gorgeous. Um, that now I can gift these cards to them without actually having to make them. Like, make them on my own. Um, so I just realized, oh no, I can still tuck that under. And for a minute there, I thought I did it, I, I put it in the wrong spot and I wasn't able to get that little label in. So yeah, I'm putting it down there instead of up there. Now, let's see. <laughs> hmm, do all of them. Okay, so it looks like, well, and that's beautiful. That's that's some good planning on Stampin' Up's behalf. Um, it looks like all of these sentiments will fit on either label. Some of the sentiments are shorter, so if you're going to put them on there, you might want to like tuck them under, but uh, this one fits perfect. And it says, with love and gratitude. And why am I trying to line it up in there? Because I don't even have it on a block yet. I don't know. <laughs> Habit. Okay, so here's, here's the tip that I'm going to tell you on this one. Apparently, I'm full of tips today. <laughs> I'm full of something. Um... They aren't all gourds. Some are called Bob. Nancy, I love you. Okay, so funny enough, the reason I was like, I think they're all gourds. And then as soon as I, th in my head, I'm like, I don't know, maybe some are. And I wouldn't have said Bob, but I totally would have said Fred. Because somehow the influence of the Flintstones when I was a kid, Bob, uh, Barney and Fred, if I pick a random name, it's Fred. Um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, Nancy, thank you. Okay, um, again, I'm just going to stamp this off. Now, here's, here's what you should do when you do this, because we have this very big block and this very skinny stamp. What you should do, just because you got to do it at least to get the, you know, condition your stamp, put it down and then do this and see how much, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating, but see how much this rocks. Um, you don't want to, well, on cardboard, you're totally fine, apparently. You don't want to do that on your thing, because you'll, you'll have a fuzzy, smudgy stamp. But just realize that because this stamp is as small as it is and the block is as big as it is, um, you need to make sure you don't rock. We can rock out later. Right now, we don't want to rock. I know, I am full of bad puns. Stay with me for more bad puns. So here's, here's what I find is the easiest way to not rock. The four-fingered approach. Yeah, hold it with both sides. Oops, maybe, maybe line it up so it's even close to straight. Um, but yeah, use all four corners. Because I find if you do this, you are more likely to go straight down, straight up. Oops, got a little bit stuck there. Straight up without rocking the stamp. One hand, I find that's when you're going to hit it. With two, you're less likely to rock. So, oh my goodness, look at that little cutie pie. I'm going to put the ink back on there. So we are going to pop on. Okay, so the whole point of today was to tell you why I love kits and to show you these new kits. And instead, I've just been playing and having fun the whole time. So, do you have any questions about kits? <laughs> oh, Nikki's got fun facts. All pumpkins are gourds, but not all gourds are pumpkins. Ooh, that sounds like such a deep thought. But let me just think for a minute. <laughs> let me drink a cup of tea. That always helps. I realized I just said, let me drink a cup of tea. How about, like, let me drink a sip of tea? Okay, I totally get your point now. All pumpkins are gourds, but not all gourds are pumpkins. I know, and, and you know what? Some of the best fall-type decorations and Halloween decorations are just all the different gourds and all their different colors and weird shapes, and, and they all look like cartoon people. And Oh, my goodness, that is pretty. Look at that. Pretty. Okay, so normally I would uh, I would give you the tip that if you're going to try something with a stamp set that you've never tried before, you should do it before you completely finish your card. But I'm going to do exactly that. <laughs> ah, funny. Okay, thank you for clarifying that, Nikki. I, I, you know, I, I like to know things. I like fun facts and to know things. Okay, so here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to put this pumpkin on. Now here's what I'm thinking, because I want to match this kind of watercolory look. Uh, let me just see. Where's my little plastic bag? This is my uh, stamps to be washed section. And I'll just keep sticking things to the bag that the block came in. And I'm going to just put this in the corner. Try to figure out when he's, when it's inked up, maybe it'll be easier to figure out which way's up. 
Okay, so here's what I'm thinking, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it on the envelope because I like to live on the edge, and then I will do it on the inside of the card. So because we only have one color, um, and monotone is in, there's so many cool things you can do with monotone. But here's the easiest way to get two colors out of one snap set. Ooh, look at the coverage on that bad guy. Okay, so stamp fully or stamp off. So I'm gonna stamp down once, and then I'm gonna stamp my pumpkin. And I don't think I had enough ink on there to begin with, but ooh, I got like a very shadowy effect. Um, and then when I go to stamp the stem, I'm gonna stamp the stem in full strength. And I can kind of see what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now, if I had done this better and not like, I've actually inked up the stamp better because look how much on there. But that's how you get a two tone. So I have my light, lighter green for the pumpkin and I surprisingly perfectly lined up that little, that little stem in the middle. So I'm gonna do it better this time though for the inside. So yeah, two colors, one ink pad. Just, you got full strength and you've got stamped off. Now, I struggle every time I try it, but you could also do it like full strength, one off, two off, and it's supposed to give you that look of motion. <laughs> um, that takes a bit of practice, frankly. <laughs> but we're gonna do this with the pumpkin. We're just gonna see if I can do a better job inking it up to begin with. Um, and here's the other thing. I think this, because this cardboard is so um, that's not going to work. This cardboard is so, what is the word I want? Porous. This cardboard is so porous, um, it is taking too much of my ink when I do my stamp off. So, I'm going to try it on here. I'm going to see what happens when I do this. Because hey, like I said before, nothing like trying everything live. Oh yeah. So I can tell, <laughs> I can tell already by how much is left on the second one versus on this one. When I did this one and I stamped and then the second one was way less, that this tissue is going to be the better idea. And, because I know a little bit about science, not a lot, but I know a little bit, the area that's already got ink is going to be less absorbent than the area that has no ink at all. Something about osmosis and things like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to do my stamp off over top of where I stamped off the last time. And then I'm going to stamp in here. Oh, see? And look at that. I got this like pebbly look. So that is much darker, which is what I wanted. And then, so this stamp, it's kind of hard to tell. Like I said, it does look a bit like a bug. Putting my hand there, it does absolutely nothing to help you. Uh, let's see, it does look a bit like a bug, but you can see once you get it, the stem goes up and then all the little spriggly parts that are coming underneath, they fit right into the top of the pumpkin. I like this little, uh, like I said, pebbled look. Okay, that one's slightly off, but you know what? Still looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna close my ink up before I do exactly what I was just about to do and set more stuff in it that I didn't want to. Move a little tissue. So now I have a little pumpkin on the inside and maybe I should have stamped it partially off because now I can't write very much in there, but look at how pretty this card is. Ooh. Okay, now here's the fun part. <laughs> Sometimes when, when you get kits, it's super obvious how they go together. Um, I noticed the, the one time that it's not always super obvious is with gift boxes. But I like it as a personal challenge. Oh yeah, this one will be easy. Um, is to put the gift box together and see if it's super easy to do without even reading the instructions. And this one will be because this one is like standard uh, gusseted bag. Oh my goodness, look at this. And it's so much bigger than I thought. Okay, so that's easy enough. So treat holders, you want a nice treat holder, you want nice edges. So you want to fold every one of those fold lines all the way back on itself. So yeah, it's all scored for you. It's awesome. If you fold them and you don't like give them a good pinch and burnish them down, um, it'll still go together. It just won't be a square. Like it'll be, you know, a little bit off to the side or floppy or it really does work better if you burnish your... So normally you could do this on the, like, on the table with your bone folder, but you can also just pinch them all with your fingers. And then you can see on here, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but they've got score lines going here. So you can see it goes down like this in the middle. I'll just do it like that so you can see. And then we've got this little part. So before I fasten everything together, I'm gonna bed these because I got a little bit more play before I secure the bottom to get these little gussets in the side. I think 
I didn't go the whole way on that one. That would have been easier if I did. There we go. And then there's a couple of these little angled ones. Sorry, I got I got to move it where I can actually see the line. There we go. And fold. So now I've got these. So now when I put this bag together and I pinch the top, and this bottom is all nice and secure like this. This is going to go like this, and we've got this little gusset in there that makes it pretty. Oh, look at this. So these these bags. Yep. It's a fairly standard pattern. You can go through and you can make these little gusseted bags quite easily. But isn't it just that much easier when Stampin' Up! does it for you? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Here's the trick to making your pretty bag. This is the flap that goes down, right, which I forgot to give a little pitch to just a minute. So this is what's going to go down on the front. So this is the front of the box. So you, this, you want this to be the last thing you fold over so that you have this nice finished front because if you do it the other way this is what you're going to see the other little like line right so you want this to be the prettiest you want to go like this so this is the last one you flip down so it's the prettiest you want the other big one to go first so you have like the less things to catch on in the bottom oh I just thought of an idea oh I just had an idea okay so this one's going to go down first, so we want to put some adhesive on here to hold these down, and we want to put some adhesive on here to hold this down. So I'm going to put it on the bottom of this, and the top of these, and a little bit on just on the edges here. So I don't know how much of that I'm going to be able to uh, keep on screen as I and actually still be able to see what I'm doing, but tear and tape is the best. So this is the back, so I'm just going to put them on here, and, and you know what, your instructions will show you this. But again, instructions. Why would I want to read the instructions? The other thing I find when you're doing 3D projects is you want one piece of adhesive to go as close as you can to the score line. Now this is a big flap. We don't want it flapping around. And the adhesive actually helps give you strength. The more places you have adhesive, like holding the pieces together, it does actually give you strength. So I always put two on, but I make sure one is really close to the line because then you don't have any gaps because you want it as pretty as possible. And this will just, if, if you were putting something super heavy in here, um, you could put like an extra piece of cardstock or something in the bottom. But generally, all you have to do is get a little bit of he adhesive on each flap and just make sure when you're deciding where your adhesive is gonna go. Uh, let's see if I can show you what I'm doing, there we go. Um, that you make sure you're not going to uh, put adhesive somewhere there's nothing to adhere to. So when I put this together and I put this flap, this one down, and then I'm going to put this one down, and I'm going to do this. There's like a small little hole here, right? So I don't want adhesive right here because it's going to go into that little hole. Um, I, but I want I want this as secure as possible. So what I'm actually going to do, and I want one right close to the edge on the front because I want it to be as secure and as pretty on the outside because it's the last thing you're going to see. So I'm actually just doubling up fairly close together to that edge. And then, just simply a matter of peel and stick as you go. And each time you put another piece down, it is a good thing I have at least some nails right now. Oh, I'm way over what I was trying to do for time. Let me go faster. Um, as you put each piece down, kind of square up your pieces, like put, put all of them before, even if you're not pushing on all the corners, um, square it up as much as you can, right? So I'm going to square it up so that by the time I'm done the end, I've got the most square box I can have. There we go. And then we're going to peel and stick and peel and stick. I'm going to do all these next ones all together. Okay. The hardest part of any kit is taking the backing off when you can't get a good grip. You know, I've, I generally have no problem with tear and tape. It is my favorite adhesive. It is because I am trying to do it live that I am having trouble. Okay. Oh, definitely sticky as I stick it to myself. <clears throat> I like all jacuzzis. Oh, it's like all jacuzzis are hot tubs, but not all hot. <clears throat> That's right. I, but, um, I remember somebody doing that. Somebody got me the first time with that. It was actually skidoos. And they said something about, oh, see, I did what I told you not to do. 
Okay, I can fix that later for the interest of time. I'm not going to. Okay, so you know how I said make sure there's something to stick to? Um, I should have actually, I should have looked at where these come out instead. This one actually should have been the other way. I could fix that afterwards. But yes, I have sticky right here because I made it the full flap. So the way this, I don't like to have these little flaps on the inside of the box because I find that if they, they catch on like the little edges and stuff. But in this case, yes, I should have put the flaps first, then the back piece, then the front piece because now I see these weird angles, which I will fix later. You want to know what though my little like as I was doing this thought was? Here's a use for the green paper because I've got eight boxes, so I need to like, I don't know, be careful how much I use. I have no idea how much is in here, but I'm just going to cut a chunk and then I'm going to cut another chunk. So I should be getting, you know, somewhat close to an eighth of a piece of green paper. And look. I can put it in the box. <laughs> Ooh, fancy. With whatever else goes in there. Okay, so this is going to go down like this. I digress. Uh, I'm actually going to look and see because in some cases you can, in this case, these, these little attachments seem like they're too, um, too delicate to be the box holder. I think in this case you're actually just going to have to put like a little glue dot or something to hold the box shut. Which is fine. Um, so yeah, so this looks like, I'm going to stamp first, I'm going to get my stamp out, um, I don't really have anything I don't think I can stamp a pumpkin on, sometimes I am, I'm like, what can I put a pumpkin on, um, I can't, there's, there's not a stamping spot on here, okay, so this is grateful for you, oh, I love that sentiment, grateful for you, I'm going to put that on here, And the, yes, these are very fall themed, I guess, imagery and colors, but grateful for you is a year round sentiment. And so this stamp set will come in handy uh, for other things because I can always, I can always use a grateful for you. Oh, it's such a cute little font on it too. Okay, so I want to put, I'm going to put three because I don't want to, nobody likes a saggy banner. So I'm going to put three dimensional. So there's one in the middle. And then I need my glue dots. And it looks like we are just going to glue these straight to the flap of the box. Of course. <laughs> when I try to do that, I don't get it. But when I don't want to do it, I get it. Let's see if I can do two in a row. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put them on these two bottom leaves. These glue dots are pretty good. So the two bottom leaves on here I put glue dots on and I'm going to hold my box squished shut. Oh, look how pretty that is. And I'm going to glue this down first and then I'm going, oops, actually you know what? I can do what I want. I like tear and tape. <laughs> I'm going to put tear and tape on mine because I like it better than the glue dots because it's easier for me. So I'm just going to put two little chunks because there you go. Um, Stampin' Up! tends to give you extra. So what, whatever amount they think you might need to close these boxes, there's that much plus probably like, you know, a little extra. So yeah, I can use them on here. So then I'm going to put this at a jaunty angle. I'm going to put just a little bit higher because I don't want it to cover too much of my gold. There we go. And then we're going to pop these guys off. Now, I think your options for closing the box are your glue dots. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And it's a good size. Like, like there's my big meat hook. It's a good size box. Look how pretty that is. Um, so the box is not going to stay closed on its own. I don't think. I'm going to do this. I'm going to burnish. Eh, nope. <laughs> Doesn't really stay closed on its own. So your option is just put a little glue dot here. Now when you go to put a glue dot there and they pop it open, um, it, it, it might tear a little bit of the paper, but you're probably good. Your other option though is just to take one of your embellishments or your dimensionals and put it on the flap. And then especially if you're with the person, 
I'm going to do that so it stays closed. Because you know with dimensionals, all you have to do is reach your scissors in, give it a snip, you cut the middle of the dimensional, it'll pop the box open and you won't do any damage to the box. So there you go. So this is the September one. Um, I will let people know. I'll put it in a newsletter or live or somewhere along the way if there are any refills available for this. But look at this kit. Woo, pretty, pretty things. Okay, I will clean up my mess later. Well, I'm going to make more and then I'll clean up my mess. Here, let me do this. I'll take those pretty things back out. Okay, they look better than this. So yes, we had those. Oh, wait a minute. See, I can't, I can't make my, my desk camera at one point. I could make it work so that I had... Um, okay, I'm moving the camera there. So anybody who needs to close your eyes, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oops. There we go. Um, oh, thanks, Nancy. Yes, I know. I went way longer than I was supposed to. But you know me. I get to chat. <laughs> oh, look, that hair's all over everywhere. Um, yeah. Um... I, I made myself totally lose my train of thought there. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, with my, <laughs> it always comes back. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, on my desk, I used to be able to get my like face cam and my desk cam to work. And now it's one or the other. But I forgot with this, I could go back and forth without too much difficulty. So yes, with love and gratitude, I send you warm wishes. And I'm going to let you go enjoy your Saturday afternoon now. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions about kits, you want to know about refills, you want to know about any of this stuff, very happy. Drop me a line. I love to talk about all this stuff. Thanks, everyone. Take care.